In this video, I'm going to talk about how to synthesize, how to prepare graphene oxide. As we have talked a lot about graphene and its derivative such as graphene oxide and reduced graphene oxide. But in this video, I will be talking about how we synthesize. Synthesize means how we make the graphene oxides and then we use it for different uh, applications right so let's get started this is basically uh, the the carbon atom uh, arranged in a hexagonal uh, structure and this is basically a, the graphene structure when the carbon atoms uh, arrange in a hexagon shape and it extend its uh, shape in all directions in two dimensional shape so this is we call a graphene right this is basically the graphene structure two dimensional structure if this honeycomb shape extend in two dimension so this we give the name graphene now synthesis uh, of graphene or getting graphene directly uh, from graphite is very very difficult and expensive uh, methods are used as well as it is quite difficult to produce for mass productions so now we use this path Again, we will, uh, we will convert this graphene oxide to reduce graphene oxide, RGO, and that RGO is more or less similar to graphene. Now, this is basically the graphene oxide structure. If we remove these functional groups like OH, O and C double OH, so this structure is basically graphene. But we cannot get this structure directly from graphite. This is why we use this lengthy process. The first of all, for example, we have a graphite block here. From there, we get graphite oxide, and then from graphite oxide, we get graphene oxide. So now, get started. How we get it? There are many methods developed to synthesize graphene oxide, but the preferred method is basically the chemical method through chemical reaction, through chemical process, right? So the method I'm discussing about, this is we call a Humer method, Humer method. This is, this is scientist, authors, whose name is, who published a paper, I think, in, in 19, 1985, 1958, I think this paper is published. 19, this is very old method. So he basically convert the graphite to graphitic oxide, mean graphite oxide, by a, a process we call oxidations. If you look here to the uh, name here, graphene oxide, so we basically we add some uh, form of oxygen to the uh, graphene, so it becomes a graphene oxide, right? So by this Humer method, uh, he basically oxidizes, mean reacts basically oxygen stuff of stuff to the graphite, so that graphite become graphitic oxides. And how it is achieved? It is achieved basically he used three different type of here uh, uh, oxidizing agents here the one is sulfuric acid the other was sodium nitrate the third was one potash potassium permanganate he used these three type of uh, mixture of these three type of compound or what you call uh, 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 oxidations uh, agents and with the help of these solutions, uh, graphite converted into graphite oxide, right? So far, I think the things are clear. He used these solutions to convert this graphite into graphite oxide. Now, once we have graphite oxide, so how we will know that uh, we oxidize the graphite block into a graphite oxide? How we will know? It is very simple. If at the end product, we have large number of graphite oxide, so we say that the uh, oxidation method is powerful, mean the, the oxidation agents, the oxidation uh, material stuff did a good job. And secondly, here if we have carbon and oxygen ratio, carbon to oxygen ratio, this is basically ratio. If the carbon and oxygen ratio in this, this form from 2.1 to 2.9, so we can say that the method is powerful carbon to oxygen ratio right this is very simple if we have two point from 2.1 to 2.9 so we say that uh, the graphite reduced to the graphite oxide right 
So uh, how we will know? How we will know by uh, two ways: uh, how much the uh, graphite oxide we have this way, and secondly, you can say that uh, what is the ratio of carbon to oxygen, right? If this uh, this the, the ratio mean if we take number of carbon atom and we divide by number of oxygen atom. So if it is in the range between 2.1 to 2.9, so we say that the graphene we get the graphite oxide here. Similarly, also for graphene here, right? So now the third process we call exfoliations. Exfoliation simply means here, uh, if you Google here or if Wikipedia, exfoliation means that when we have a material and you remove the dead layer from something, that is called exfoliation. Now we get here graphite oxide. So by now it is also a big in form. So we need thin layer. So we use some sonication process and some other process to get the graphene oxide. So here, how we achieve this? This process we call exfoliation. The preferred graphite oxide can easily form dispersion in organic solvent. Why it get this now? Why it get dispersed in organic solvents like also water here? Because now we have oxygen functional group. Now it can easily now uh, act with the uh, this kind of uh, solvents. Also, we can we use water most of the time. They use water, but we can also use DMF, NMP, THF, and ethyl glycol. And this graphite oxide become exfoliated into individual single layer graphene sheets. You see here, this is now thick sheets we have, and when we exfoliate here, uh, when we disperse it. And when we sonicate this graphite oxide, and when we sonicate and vibrate, so we get the uh, thin and single layer, individual layers, and that we call basically graphene oxide sheets. So I do hope it is very very clear. It is not uh, uh, this Humer's method that we. There are also some modified uh, methods here people use, and people just replace this. Nothing. People nothing do. People just replace this <laughs> oxidations uh, agents, like as we explain. People replace this with some other um, uh, uh, oxidizing agents. Here we use KmO4, HSO4, NaNO3. There they use some other form of uh, oxidizing agents.